So today I went out riding with the Movistar crew that are here for the Tour and Under Pro Tour race in Adelaide, Australia, 2013, January. The date today, 15th of January. So I'm out here with the guys showing them the Corkscrew Road, which is quite a steep climb. It's about 10% gradient, quite steep. You can't really tell by looking like this, because you're riding with Tour de France riders here, they make it look easy. They make it look easy. And the camera also makes them look a little bit bigger than they really are. These guys are pretty skinny, but hard to tell with the camera. So, excuse the shaking there, just out the saddle. This is using a GoPro camera on the handlebar, and the camera shake will stop a little bit. So it's quite steep here, approaching the first hairpin on Corkscrew Road. Now this is a fabled climb, a very favourite climb. And I've got a top 10 fastest time all time up here. I've done 8.30. This day we did at 8.47. Uh, bearing in mind I had over 160 kilometres in my legs at this point. These guys just had about 50 kilometres in their legs at this point. So I had 110k extra in my legs. And I was feeling it. But hey, can't complain. Just got to train. So you can see the right in front of me. Out the saddle. When you're out the saddle you get to use different muscle groups. A bit more gravity. And... Uh, I like to use a bit of accommodation myself in and out of the saddle. So here we're approaching the first corner, the first hairpin, quite steep. It's probably about 20% gradient here. Again, when you're filming Tour de France riders, it makes it look easy. So I'm just sitting behind them, getting the draft. And uh, you can notice all these guys using pretty easy gears. Just spinning, spinning. Not much grinding going on here at all. And they're just cruising up. So the t pace was... I would call it hard tempo. I wasn't going all out, and neither were they. But as you see in a moment, these two guys at the back were feeling the pressure a bit too much, so I had to go around them and get back onto the other four. So I'm bridging the gap here. These guys started to pace down a little bit more. Go on the front, out the saddle, dancing. So these guys are on like fifteen thousand dollar bikes, super light. My bike I got for a grand, <laughs> but. It's a good bike for a grand, it's definitely a good bike. These guys are on better bikes, but my bike's good enough. It's good enough. So we're going up the climb here. These guys make it look easy, but you can see by how much upper body movement they're going on that they are pushing pretty hard. We're pushing pretty hard. We've already dropped, we've dropped two professional Tour de France level riders. They've just felt the pace was a bit too hot and uh, they just they just found it was a bit too fast for January, so they let dropping back a few, uh, half a minute or so there. So we're cru cruising up. Only got a couple minutes left for this climb. This climb that day, like I said before, took us about 8 minutes 47. It's only a couple of kilometres, but uh, quite a steep climb. As you can see, the, the right and the left out of the saddle. And uh, yeah, it's good. Good to be able to mix it up with these guys. Good to be able to train with elite, world class athletes in your chosen sport. My sport, I enjoy is cycling. So it's great that my nutrition plan, my lifestyle plan, allows me the natural drug-free energy to go out and train with the very best on the planet. Now, I did 210 kilometers the day before. So I'm riding on pretty fatigued legs, yeah, I can still keep up with the pros, training at a decent rate on some very steep climbs. I've seen people walk their bike up this mountain. This is definitely a berg, and it is featuring the Tour Down Under this year quite it's going to be quite entertaining. So again, just take note of the high cadence these riders are riding at. Just spinning those pedals, spinning those pedals. If you push too big a gear, you produce too much lactic acid and it's going to slow you down. It's going to slow you down. So when the guys here having a little dig off the front, have a bit of a laugh. So again, the camera makes them look bigger than they really are. These guys are quite skinny. It almost looks like they've got sort of fat bums, but they are very lean. It's just the GoPro effect makes things look a bit bigger than they really are. So we're approaching the top here, starting to ease off a bit. And the team car flies past there, gets to the top, and uh, it's going to hand us some water bottles, I think. So it's just great to see these guys in action and uh, see how, how they train. And uh, just all about pacing, correct pacing, correct gear selection. And what do they eat? They're eating bananas and Coke. <laughs> That's all I see them eating. Yesterday I went out of Andy Schleck and the crew and all I saw them eat was bananas, like ripe spotty bananas and Coca-Cola and water. And uh, I've seen a few of the teams eating bananas who are a little bit too green for my uh, my liking. But uh, they're definitely the Radio Shack team. Someone in there knew how to pick a good ripe banana and they had spotty bananas. 
Pirates, and I've got some more footage of that coming up soon. But I'll do a quick video because I've done a video for a few days. It's been banging out the K's, trying to win the Strava challenge. So uh, it's been good fun. Fun in the sun in Adelaide. Now, Adelaide, Australia, man, it is the best place for training. You can't get anywhere better for training in Adelaide. That's why all these Spanish riders and French riders and Russian riders and Lithuanian riders and German riders and Dutch riders and Luxembourg riders and Portuguese riders come to South Australia for training. That's the top there. So it wasn't any furious sprint and just going to cross the line and get to Strava there and uh, turn around. So it's a nice resurfaced new road for the uh, turn on the race. So none of us are really super fatigued, just a little bit of a cool down there. Two more riders coming up the back there from the, the team. The guys that got dropped weren't too far back. They just uh, wanted to ease it up a bit. So there you go. What does a Duran rider do? Can Duran rider keep up with the very best in training? I don't know. What do you think? What do you think? You know, I'm not a full-time rider either. But uh, I like to get out there, bit of sweat, carb up, get out there and enjoy. And it's life's an adventure, man. That's what it is. Thanks for watching.